Uh, hi everyone, how's it going? Uh, my name is Damian Philippi. I've been developing on the Salesforce platform for the last seven years now. Uh, I have a Salesforce certified platform one certification and I've passed the platform two test. I've worked with Salient for the last three years here with Taylor. Hi, my name is Taylor Kingsbury. I'm also a certified platform developer one. Uh, I've been with Salient for about three years, and uh, before this, I was actually a math teacher at Drexel University, and five years ago, I made the switch to working with Salesforce, and I've been doing it ever since. So this is Lightning Architecture for Beginners. Um, there's a few things that you should be familiar with before we start. Um, number one, you need to have some familiarity with Salesforce. If you don't, then a great place to start is Trailhead. I recommend the admin path. Um, Second is you should have some basic familiarity with HTML and JavaScript. Uh, we will be showing some code samples that use both. Um, you should have some very basic familiarity with Apex. The Apex we're going to show is not too complex, but um, you should have used it at some point. And uh, make sure you have a developer org. It's really the best way to test out these features. Um, you can follow this link later and uh, sign up for one if you don't have one. OK, so um, really, this is about how am I going to create a very simple Lightning component. We're going to start off with a very simple component, and then we're going to use that within another more complex component so that we can show how we can reuse our components after we build them. Um, so there's a couple ways to test them. Uh, first is to build out a Lightning application. Lightning application is really just a way in the developer console that you can test your Lightning components. Um, another way to test them is to use a record detail page. And we'll show examples of both of those later on. Um, again, we're going to show how to reuse our Lightning components. We're going to have some code samples. Uh, we're going to have a demo towards the end. Uh, all the code samples that we show are going to be available at this GitHub link. So if you follow this, uh, you'll be able to see all the code we have in these slides. All right, so what is some basic information I should think about when building my Lightning components? Um, rule number one for us is to try to make these components as simple as possible. If your component is doing too many things, you want to try to break those into smaller components so that you're not having too many responsibilities inside one component. So it's better to have smaller, more reusable Lightning components that we can build out and reuse them later rather than have one giant component with a lot of things going on in it. Um, one other piece of information that we found useful is that we should be able to pass data between components rather than having every component that you build gather its own data. So my components don't always need to retrieve data on their own, right? I can pass in some data into one component and use that rather than being less efficient by gathering the data for each component separately. Um, we have a list of best practices here. This is from Salesforce. And um, this is a good, right, right here is a good starter trailhead. Um, it, it walks you through building a, a basic Lightning component and working your way through to the end to make it sort of a useful uh, component that you can use um, in, in, your, in your production org. All right, so let's get into how we can actually create these components. Um, you want to structure them in a way so that any low-level functionality is broken off. This sort of goes back to what I was saying earlier about we don't want our component to be doing too many things. If it's doing too many things, see if there's a way that you can take your component and maybe make it its own component. Now, at the same time, we don't want to make our components so basic that they don't work on their own. So all of your components should be able to work as standalone components. But we want to make them so that they're small enough so that we can try to reuse them in other more complex components. All right, so um, let's get started. Let's try to create our first component.
OK, so here I have my hello message component. Um, every component starts and ends with this aura component attribute. Uh, we have below that, we have, um, we have the aura attribute tag. And this is a container for any information that you're going to be storing in your component. So whatever data I'm going to be showing to the screen, I can store it in my aura attribute. Notice I have a default value for this, for this attribute. It's the, uh, it's the string df. And that means below on line four, when I'm displaying my information to the screen, it's going to say hello. And then the message that's stored in this bang v dot message. And that's going to be whatever's stored in this or attribute. That's what's going to display to the screen. Um, so how can we test this out? Well, we need to create an app. And our app here has our component inside of it. And we have our hello message component with the message Dreamforce session. So this message here overrides the value in my default attribute. So when I actually run this, this application, it's going to display hello and then the message that I indicated, which is Dreamforce session. So if I run this preview here, it should say my overridden value. Okay. So um, I want to go over what some of the four basic parts of building a Lightning component. Um, these four parts are not the only parts that you'll see. There are more than just these. But basically, when you're building Lightning components, you're going to have probably most of these things involved in it. Um, the first is the component, which we've already seen. Uh, the component is what you see on the screen. Whatever's on the screen is going to be displayed through the component. It's similar to, if, you, if you're a Visual Force developer, it's similar to what's on the Visual Force page itself. Um, next, we have the JavaScript controller. It's very similar to what an Apex controller was for Visual Force. Um, it's, it's going to basically determine what the rules are for what gets displayed to the screen. Um, helpers are a, a bit more complex, but normally you want to take whatever low-level logic you have in your JavaScript controller and put that into your helper. And the reason is because it makes it more reusable so that you can take what's in your helper and use that in other components. Um, finally, we have the Apex controller, which is what you need if you're going to interact with the database itself. So my Apex controller can either update, insert, or retrieve data from Salesforce and if you need that data to display in your component, you're going to need an Apex controller. Um, again, there's, there's more than just these parts. But um, if you're going to build components, you're probably going to want to use at least these, these four pieces. Uh, so that sounds good and everything. But how do we actually reuse what Taylor had just helped us create a moment ago? Uh, well, to do that, we're going to create a new hello contact component. So there's a few things this component's going to need to do. Uh, we're going to want to be able to place this component on a standard objects page in Lightning. We're going to want to be, be able to get information about whatever record it is that we're in for that detail page. And we're going to want to pass information from that uh, record detail to our component. So we can go here and look at the code for how we do this. So we had created a new hello contact component. Uh, if you have any questions about creating new components, you can actually just go to File, New, and then Lightning Component or Application, in, in case you are wondering. Uh, you'll notice here that our first line, the component's a little different than Taylor's had, where we're using this implements keywords here. Uh, this force record I has record ID. Actually, what it kind of does is it gives you a hidden attribute behind the scenes here 
that has a name of record ID. And that basically just has the record ID of whatever uh, record it is that you're on. And then the second part here that says available for a record home is actually what allows you to take this component and put it on a detail page in a component. And then you'll notice further here to the right, it ha has the controller equals the contact view controller. This actually refers to an Apex controller. So that's how you include an Apex controller into your Lightning component logic. Uh, line two, it's very similar to the attribute that Taylor had told you guys about earlier. Uh, line four here, it's a little bit different. This Aura handler has something unique about it where the name actually says init. What this init means is that when a user or yeah, when a user comes to this component, this handler is going to automatically fire and it's going to call this action in the JavaScript controller that goes with this component. So it's going to call this do init method in that case. And we'll take you to that in a moment. Uh, then we skip here to line seven. If you notice, we have this component that this is the component that Taylor had helped, helped us create earlier. It looks very similar to how he referred to it in the application, except here we're using it in this component instead. And you'll notice here for the message, we're actually passing in the contact's name. So that v dot annotation refers to the view, uh, which is actually referring to this component here. And then the CNT refers to this attribute that we had described here up, up here on line two. So we're using the name field from that contact that we had declared earlier. If we want to go ahead and look at the JavaScript controller, it's very simple. Uh, all it does is takes the component and we're just passing the information directly into the helper. So in your actual uh, controller here, the JavaScript controller, you want to have as little, little code as possible. You want to do the majority of your work in the helper just like you would uh, potentially pass information into a utility class in Apex. And here you'll see it starts to get a little more complex. Oh, shoot. Um, the first, so line four here, we have, it refers to a component and it's calling a dot get method on, on it. And if you'll notice the string we're passing in here, it has this C dot. This C dot actually means that it's referring to the Apex controller specifically. And that means we're referring to the method in the Apex controller, get contact details. I'll show you that method in a moment. But it also has some parameters that we're going to want in this method as well. Uh, it has a contact ID that it accepts and we're passing that invisible record ID that I had told you about earlier from our component that gets populated using this has record ID. So just like I said before, imagine that there is an invisible record ID attribute here. And that's exactly what it's referring to in this instance. So it's passing that information into the Apex controller. Uh, we can go ahead and look at the Apex controller just so we can see what it's doing. Uh, and right here you see that get contact details method. You see it has a parameter of contact ID as well. In order to allow our Lightning component to see, see this method here, we have to use this or enable tag and make sure that we declare the method as static. And once you have these two things, then you can use it just like a regular Apex method where so here we're returning a contact where it's just doing a query right here and returning a specific contact depending on whatever contact ID was passed into the method. Um, and even though we did all that, nothing actually has happened yet. We, we are still setting a callback now from whatever is happening from the Apex controller. And the first thing we're going to look at is the response here from that and it has a state. And we're checking to make sure that the state is successful because if it's not successful, we're not going to have the sort of return type that we expected. And so we just want to 
let someone know, oh, hey, that an error has occurred here if it's not successful. Now, if it is successful, all we're doing is taking that contact and placing it directly into the CNT attribute in our component. So if you remember here, line two in the component, the CNT contact again, this is what we're setting from the helper. Uh, and again, once we've gotten to that point, nothing has happened yet. None of that logic has happened until line 20. This is very important. This actually is what tells the, the Apex method to queue up, and then once it finishes, that calls the callback after that, sometime after that point. Um, so once all ha that has happened, it will finally populate this contact and then pass it into the hello message and then suddenly it's going to have a value to show to the screen. Uh, and so now we've created this component, but we still can't use it yet. So we should probably show you how to use it. If you go to a contact record here in Salesforce, you can see that this is just a very simple detail record in Lightning. Uh, but we want to go add our new, our new component now. So you can go to the setup icon and just hit edit page and it just takes you to the detail record for the detail uh, setup for whatever record is whatever object type we're on. So we just want to close out all the standard ones and find our hello contact that we have just created. All you have to do is drag it in and drop it and save. And then once you go back you can see that it's here. So it says hello Don Don, uh, John Dodge, and it had passed the contact's name directly into that com the component that Taylor had created, and so now we're reusing it in this page. Now, it would be very easy to be able to reuse this in, say, an account or any other objects if we wanted as well, because we can do the same sort of uh, uh, code that we did for the contact, but just do it again for whatever other object, and Taylor doesn't need to change his component at all and we can keep reusing it. Okay, so in, in this 20 minutes, we showed you how to build a basic lighting component and reuse it. Uh, we gave you the structure of a basic low-level component and how to display that low-level component on an object when we reuse the code. You can find the code uh, here at this URL. It's a GitHub link. And there's some additional trailheads if you want some more information about how to uh, build these lightning components. And if anyone has any questions, we have uh, just under two minutes for some questions. Hey, can you walk up? Sorry, I can't hear. Uh, okay, he asked it, how the governor limits count towards the queries on uh, each component. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's actually a good question that I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, I think it's one, right? It, no, he, he's asking about if there's multiple components all firing oh. different yeah. queries or do they all count towards the same governor limits or are they all separated out, I believe is what he means. Um, off the top of my head, I, I can't remember. I would have to test it and let you know. Um, anyone else have any other questions? OK. Well, in that case, we got about an extra minute to give back to you guys. And if anyone wants to come up and talk to us, that's fine as well. Thanks, guys.